Hello everyone, and welcome to Changeling Gaming. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Blood on the Clock Tower. Blood on the Clock Tower is a level 2 play-to-learn game designed by Stephen Medway and published by the Pandemonium Institute for 5 to 20 players plus a storyteller that takes on average 30 minutes to 2 hours to play. Blood on the Clock Tower is a game of social deduction and careful use of every player's unique powers to unravel a mystery set and guided for them by a storyteller who was recently murdered by a demon in the town of Ravenswood Bluff. This video is only part of the game, those rules that players need to know in order to participate in the game. If you are preparing to run the game as the storyteller, then you should check out this video here instead. Setup. The storyteller will handle the vast majority of the setup for the game. During this time, players should get to know each other a little bit and examine the specific script of characters they will be playing with. The core three scripts are available on this channel as their own videos. How to play. The goal of the game is different for the two teams. The good team with the blue tokens wants to eliminate the demon from their midst. Meanwhile, the demon is trying to survive to the final two players, at which point the evil team with the red tokens wins. There are two main phases to the game, the night phase and the day phase. During the night phase, everyone's eyes will be closed, and the storyteller will be moving around resolving the nighttime abilities. During the day phase, players will have an opportunity to move around and talk to each other, then vote and execute a player for any number of potential reasons. During the night phase, all players will have their eyes closed. The storyteller will be moving around and tapping on players to wake them up, and either receive information from the storyteller, or carry out some task as determined by their role. All players should either have a collective conversation about non-game related topics, or make some other kind of noise, etc. to obscure the motions and actions of the storyteller. The storyteller will communicate silently through two main means these phrase tokens, and by certain specific gestures. There are tokens for indicating who the demon is, indicating who the minions are, telling the demon that the following characters are not in play, telling a player that their role has changed in combination with their new role token, telling a player who a player is in combination with that player's role token, telling a player they were selected by a particular character in combination with that character's role token asking a player if they nominated someone today, or asking a player if they voted today. To wake a player up, the storyteller will tap a player twice in a respectful place. When they want a player to go to sleep, they will cover their eyes with their hand. To indicate yes, the storyteller will nod their head. To indicate no, the storyteller will shake their head. To indicate a player is good, the storyteller will give a thumbs up. To indicate a player is evil, the storyteller will give a thumbs down. To indicate a number, the storyteller will show that number with their fingers, or give a zero if necessary. If a specific player must be identified or a selection confirmed, the storyteller will point clearly to that player. If a character role must be revealed, then the storyteller will take that token from the grimoire and show it to the player until they confirm that they've seen it. The first night, the storyteller will wake the minions together and let them know who the demon is, but do not communicate with the other minions at this time. Acknowledge each other and the demon being identified, then go back to sleep. The storyteller will also wake the demon the first night and identify which players are their minions. Then the storyteller will provide the demon with three character roles that are not in play that they can use to bluff as if they want. The storyteller will then wake and resolve the abilities of all the other characters who wake on that first night before putting them back to sleep. Once the first night is done, everyone will be woken up and have an opportunity to move around and talk to the other players. This is an opportunity to try and learn new information, either from players that have a reason to trust you or by exchanging information with other players. Evil players are aiming to blend into the crowd and potentially find good targets for their abilities, while good players are trying to find people they can trust and identify who is the most suspicious or expendable. In some scripts, players have abilities that involve speaking to the storyteller during the day. After a bit, the storyteller will call the group back to their assigned seats and the discussion will turn collective, with everyone talking together. And 
storyteller will call for nominations for execution. Execution is how the town eliminates players they suspect of being the demon or evil, or that they want to in order to test theories, or gain information through player death. There are numerous roles across scripts that benefit from even good players being executed. To nominate a player for execution, a living player must proclaim that they are nominating that player for execution. The nominator then gets a chance to make their accusation or statement for why this execution is good, or they can ask another player to make the accusation for them. After the accusation, the nominated player gets a chance to issue their defense or why they should not be executed. At any point after this accusation and defense, the storyteller may step in and start the vote town. They will stand in the middle, hands pointed outwards like a clock, and rotate around the circle. As the hands pass each player, if their hand is up, a vote will be counted aloud. But if the player is late in raising their hand, or anything else occurs, then the vote will not be counted. Only a clearly raised hand when the storyteller is pointing at that player will count, and any hands that are not won't be counted. For a player to be up for execution, there must be at least half the town voting for them to be executed. If the vote count meets or surpasses the vote threshold for the player count, which is half the players rounded up, then that player is up for execution. Subsequent nominations must surpass that vote count to replace the player up for execution. If the vote counts are tied, then neither player is up for execution, and a later nomination must still surpass the tied vote counts. So if two players received five votes, then neither would be up for execution, and later nominations would need six or more to execute. Note that every day, each player gets only a single nomination, and each player can only be nominated once each day. Only one player can be executed per day. An execution is not required, though. When a player dies, their white life clock token is flipped over and a vote token will be placed upon it. That player immediately loses their character ability, though their character is not given out to the town. Dead players are not able to nominate other players to be executed, though they can still be nominated for execution. They still close their eyes at night and participate in conversations with the other players, trying to solve the puzzle. Dead players also have one final vote they can use at any point in time. When they use it, it is removed from their token on the town square board. In fact, Dead player votes are often the deciding factor in which team wins the game. The game will continue rotating between day and night, until the demon is killed and no other demons exist, or abilities that create demons, or abilities that keep the game going for evil, in which case, good wins. If there are only two players left though, not including travelers, then evil wins. If the win conditions are simultaneous, then the good win condition overrides and good wins. All members of a team, whether alive or dead, win. There is one more common set of mechanics to discuss. Drunkenness and being poisoned. In both cases, the effect is straightforward. The player has no ability. This lasts only as long as the player is drunk or poisoned, and a player can be both drunk and poisoned simultaneously. This means that a player receives whatever information the storyteller wants, based on their usual ability. So false information can be given out to players by the storyteller if they are drunk or poisoned. Travelers and Fabled In games where there are more than 15 players, or if players arrive late or have to leave before the game ends, those players will play as travelers instead. So if a player arrives late, they will be added to the town as a traveler. And if a player knows they probably won't be able to stay until the end of the game, then they can opt to play as a traveler instead and leave the circle when they have to. Travelers do not count as players for the win conditions at the end of the game, but they do count for execution vote thresholds. Travelers are also unique in that every player gets to know which player is which traveler character. Travelers can be good or evil, and should be good around two-thirds of the time. To eliminate a traveler, an exile vote is held. Any player can call for the exile of a traveler, even dead players, though each traveler can only potentially be exiled once per day. Every player can vote, no matter if alive or dead, without costing any dead votes. A simple majority is necessary to exile the traveler, but it is a majority of all players at the table. 
note that all abilities are suspended for this vote. So abilities that add votes don't work, or abilities that restrict a player's ability to vote normally. Once exiled, a traveler operates similarly to a dead player. They have a single dead vote and exist in the game like any other dead player. In addition, travelers cannot normally be affected by abilities that swap characters or change roles. They are fixed to their players. Fabled are modifiers that the storyteller might add to the game for any number of reasons. Anytime a storyteller adds a fable to the game, they will explain what that fabled does. These can make the game easier for new players, shift the pace of the game, or have other subtle yet interesting effects. Teensy though. If the player count is particularly low, then you can play Teensyville games, though there have been a few changes to the regular gameplay for balance. The biggest changes to note are that the minion and demon do not get to know each other, so they will each have to blindly try to win the game for their team on their own. And the demon does not receive three not-in-play characters to bluff as, so they won't have quite as concrete a good role to bluff as. So go ahead and either deceive the good townsfolk to allow evil to succeed, or aid the good people of Ravenswood Bluff in attempting to pierce those lies and piece together the interwoven set of truths and half-truths. Be sure to support your local game stores. For us, there is Board Game To Go, who offer over 2,000 games for rental within the Toronto area and many games for purchase. If you're curious about this game, check out the link in the description. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to pose them in the comments below. Or take a look to see if someone else has already answered it down there, and be sure to thank them if they have. If you want to learn more about what a ranking system means, check out this video here. And if you want to learn how to play more games, check out our playlist here. And subscribe to learn when new videos come out. And remember, keep changing, keep gaming, have fun. Tip, most players will die but this can be a great source of information as well.